So now I'm going to put the uh, put the hammer butt in. Okay, you see how I'm doing that? How I'm just holding that? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you want vice screws? Does that mean straight? Hammond? Have a have a look at that. How I'm just holding that the yeah. in there with the. Uh, I'm, I have the. Does everybody see this? I'm using that as a wet, like. A... So I'm holding the. Um, hey, I'm in. Come have a look at this. Yes, sir. So I'm holding the flange against the the flange rail, mm -hmm. but I'm also pushing the jack out of the way. Okay. To make room for this. A little screw on there and then whoop. Surgery. And I really just have to get one turn, and that's enough. Just nudge the jack over. Yeah, you don't have to push the jack over so far that it can possibly damage it. But. When I put this flange on, I'm going to do my best to Center. square it up. Oh, I see. Looks like it's off to the right a little bit, but I don't know what I can do about that. All right, so now I've got the, uh, so that's a really tight fit. And I notice two things that I don't like, even if it is at 90 degrees. What do you see, Whitney, that looks unacceptable? Well, the catcher is higher. Yes. It is longer, though. But yeah, it needs what to else? come down. The top sticks. Does the top stick out higher than the others too? It's just like not the same size and it's crooked. Um, it just doesn't look the same. Mm -mm. Look at this gap here. That's an important one. Yeah. So you'd want it to put a little. So is the piece whole of tape in there, or is it just... They're the both. The, the, the butt and the shaft are both to the right. Yeah. <coughs> so you go tape. Hmm? Did you use tape? Think. Did you say tape? Talking about travel? Oh, no. Okay. So, um, I don't know. Part of that, part of that is, is it seems like the whole thing is just off to the right a little bit. Um... But I, I think I'm just going to compromise for it by, as we narrow, we're going to narrow this shank to open it up, and I'm just going to compromise for both, both that angle there, and this space here by narrowing the shank, which, which gives me a little bit of room. Right now, this is so tight in there. If you twist the shank, will it go the other way? No, it, unless it's a whole. curvy shank. And check it. It so looks like it might be a little curved. Does that happen a lot? Pretty flat. It's a there's a slight curve, but not bad. Not too bad. Jump different one. No, this is fine. Okay. Okay. You know how to neural it? I don't even know what that means. Okay. Come over here and let's teach you. Time to neural. Mom's already getting the neuraler ready. Mom. I think you suggested to the right height. Okay, so put the uh, put the shank in 
right there, or the, yeah. Just on this side. Mm -hmm. Give it a little bit, put it in a little bit more. And if it squeezes it too much, then you'll have to adjust it. This way, right? Good. Just like that. Mm -hmm. And then tighten it. Well, you want it, you want it tight to begin with, so. so take it out and give it just a little. Try that. I'll just, just run it through. What's the purpose of this? There's two, two purposes. You want to do it regardless, but we're also using it to uh, buy us a little bit more adjustability. Okay. To then... essentially squeeze the wood so that it's not so tight in the hole. When it's, when it's so tight in the hole, we're like 100% reliant on, on the drilling. But when we've got a little bit of space, you know, we don't want too much space because then we're relying too much on the glue to hold everything together, which frankly it can. But, you know, you want it to be a fairly tight fit. Um, so that's the first purpose. First purpose is to, not necessarily the most important, but one of the, one of the two purposes is to give some adjustability. The other is to um, give uh, room for the glue to come out. When it's tight, then the glue, then this just acts like a hydraulic piston push it down and it just pressure. squeezes the squeezes the glue and there's pressure in there and it just wants to push it back up. When you've got a glue escape, then you've got glue that just coats the whole thing. So if you don't have a knurler tighten that up a little bit. What would you suggest doing? Evenly kind of going around it with some vice grips, not mm -hmm. hard? Sure. That's what I've done in the past. Just one. You can even Bam. see how that is thinner. Do you see that? How it's thinner there? Mm -hmm. So now it'll be looser in the hole so we can pull it to the left a little. Awesome. Left and forward. You can see we've got we've got some some wiggle space there. Um, we grab some wood glue, and then we've also got a little bit of wiggle space there. So after you glue it, would you just kind of with two hands hold it left and forward as it dries? Um, yeah. And I'll probably give it a little bit, uh, a little bit more pressure than it needs because we've got, because we're squeezing this felt, which it won't have. It won't have my, you know, the weight of my finger pulling it down. And here's another thing that, you know, this is a. Um, I know, I know, my colleagues, piano you know, technicians, people that are watching this video. Um, are gonna cry foul when they see me using wood glue for this. Fish glue. Um, you know, it's traditional to use um, hide glue for this. Hide. Why aren't we? Because um, wood glue is so darn convenient. Okay. And leave that there. Okay. Just got a little glue, glue on it. Perfect little collar. Bam. Just gonna hold that down there for a little bit, and I've got it more or less compressed, okay. centered. We'll have to come back to this later. Um, why don't we drill this out? We'll glue it later, but let's let's drill this out right now. Let's talk about the uh, while I while I put a little pressure on this. Let's talk about the procedure to uh, and and by the way, 
I mean, there's two hammers in that Kimball that you're working on that need that need uh, what we're doing right now. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. The lowest note, the A0, mm -hmm. it needs a new hammer. Okay. Just a new hammer altogether. And then it was the D sharp one. So this is A0, mm -hmm. A sharp 0, B0, mm -hmm. C1. So the only zeros are these first three. And then the first one with that number is C1. So I, when I write on the instructions, um, you know, A4, this is not A1, this is A0, and yeah. you know, this whatever, whatever around here is A1, A2, A3, A4. Yeah. That's not A5. Okay. Okay. So it was two of them. It was, it was A0 and D-sharp 1. D-sharp, A0 needs a new hammer altogether. D-sharp 1. Is that the one where it's like they replace it with a small one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then D-sharp 1 was replaced with, uh, it was just poorly done. It's just like up too high and the angle's not right. And I mean, it looks like it, looks like it was redone and it wasn't done well. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this in order to duplicate this um, angle. Let's go over the drill press again. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the vise to match this angle of the drill bit. So it lines up like. And then how am I gonna get the other angle? Well, you could tilt from this until it matches up. Exactly. So one angle. So there's my first Complete. angle. Complete. Next angle. Winnie, do you want to get it? Do you want to get the angle? Me? Yeah. Does that look straight? No. Does it need to go more of this way? Yeah. Don't line up the shank with the bit. Line it up to the side so there's a teeny bit yeah. of a gap and then make the gap close. Um. Yeah. yeah this, might, this might help. Yeah, that helps. Like that? Yeah, that's good. No, oh, now it's too tops too far in. Yeah. And if I like to kind of slide it down, and that way I can see if it, it's closing perfect. Move your head. Move your head look over. Right there. Got it? Yes. Looks good. It's 
so now I'm gonna. I would go just a little more. And by the way, I mean you can do the same thing. <coughs> I think this this got nudged a little bit. We're gonna do the same thing um, when we actually glue on the hammer head, where we where we do the super fine adjustment later on, or we open up the or, or you can open up the drill bit or open up the the hole in the in the hammer or squeeze that shank the new shank a little bit so that it uh, so that there's a little bit more space to adjust the hammerhead in there. To null it a little. All because of that little crack. Yeah. slowly and you can feel when it when there's a slight pop you don't want to go too far especially with <laughs> upright hammers don't want to go through it and yeah you've got an angle you've got you've got issues that you're dealing with there um, so the grand hammer doesn't matter because you're going all the way through with an upright hammer as soon as you feel that slight pop you're there doesn't look good when there's one all the way through. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Let's uh why don't I just why don't I just talk through how you do how we do this um, so that we can just hurry and and get to the soda blasting. So um, I turn that Compressor on a lot. Like yeah, let's do that. Let's turn the compressor on. Okay. Vamos, vamos a hablar solamente. Oh, okay. So you can use the you can use that to doing to it cut that mean. off, or you can use the little dog clippers to cut it off. He's going to turn on the air compressor here in a second. And so you intentionally cut it off too high, and then have a little uh, uh, again a file like a like a straight file works really well. So you intentionally cut it off too high, you might want to cut it off to its neighbor and then sort of file down um, the edges so that this fits on there easily. And then put this on and compare it with its neighbors and then use the file little by little. I like to, I like to use my finger to clamp that, file that down little by little, keep checking it, keep filing it a little more. Okay, still too high, file it a little bit more. Okay, we're there. So what you're trying to do is you want you want to be able to lay a straight edge across right here and right here so that these tops are all in line. Straight edge there and there and you want the angle. You want it to look like no one ever knew you were here. Mm -hmm. um, Still. Would it help to see an example of a of a some hammers that were not well done? Yeah, let's so see one. Can you go see one? Okay, let's go look real quick. And so then, holding it right. All the air compressor charges will do that. So holding it right there is important. So you know, put another crack somewhere else. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's exactly why. through the key room, bring them some pianos.
Okay, so um, so this was not th this this piano. It came like this, right? This was yeah. this is how we got it. Yeah. Um, so here we've got this D sharp one, where a couple things. One, it's way too high. You couldn't lay a straight edge across there. It looks you know it looks like someone did a did a repair but did it poorly. It's also angled off to the right. This is out of line. It's just a it's just a you know. It's, it's obvious that someone was there. Yeah. Um, then a couple of them. Then on A zero, the lowest one. They just they just repaired it. And I'm sure I'm sure what happened is um, it was just missing, and they just were looking through their bag and they just yeah it's what they found it's what the technician happened to have in their bag at this customer's home and. That's what they used. It's too skinny. Yeah, it's just the wrong one. Okay. Cool. All right. Do you have enough air to uh, um, do some soda blasting? Do we want to go through how to load the soda on the machine? Yeah. We, um, we can do that first while it's charging and okay. just, just to go through the motion. Sure. But we can do that outside and close the door. And, so that yeah, no, it seems like what would be important for everyone. And I'm... Jared's not here, darn it. This... This battery's gonna die. What's that? This battery's gonna die. I just get it finger tight 
Okay. Because air is going through anyway. There's holes in it for the air to go out. So if that leaks a little, that's what it's supposed to do. But you have to unscrew this feeder tube. And you can't lift it up too much because of all the hoses. But once, once that's up, and you can kind of tell, right there is where the, the soda is right to there. So we're half full already. So we don't need to put a little bit in there. How can you tell? How can you tell if uh, if that straw is clogged? Well, as long as it's coming out, that means it's flowing down. But that's what this wire's for: is to kind of uh -huh. ream that out. And if you push this you do down, you, you will it? hit a block, and you will know it's not going. Okay. And, and I can for, I can feel it. And that's but, for moisture. Yeah, if it gets wet and it makes a little clot. So you can see the water. See, it's just and, and it and it shouldn't have that much in it, but it does. It kind of fills up something because the stuff's blowing around in there. But if it'll do that, you can see that end is empty, and that's all you want. And when it does, when it won't spray and you shake it a little and it won't spray that's what you have to do is take it apart take this out ream that out and then put it back together that's how to fix it when it's that's not how to fix it not and, shake it hard and we've tried taking this all apart and cleaning all this that's not the problem it's, this is the problem yeah, the straw. okay okay, okay. Hmm. so if the battery dies do you want to quickly explain what this does okay so, how to how to how to fill it you mean or what um, the whole mechanism, what it's used for. He's saying oh. what, what the soda is actually doing on the wood. Okay, so this is similar to a sandblaster, only a finer uh, abrasive. And the soda is just a very fine type of sandblasting. And so the, the, sand, the soda is in here and we pressurize it with air. And then this um, pushes the air out. And theoretically, it's supposed to come out the bottom and there's one hole at the top so that it... It's fluffing the soda in there. Soda's kind of heavy, and especially when it, well, when it gets kind of empty, it has a hard time. So there's not always a lot of soda in the top air cavity. And so you have to kind of shake it to get that, that air that's coming out to blast, to, to pick it up. When you want a hole on the very bottom? What's that? When you want a hole on the very bottom? There is. There's four holes down there. Is that a problem to blow in it like that? Are you introducing moisture? moisture? <laughs> a little bit, but it's not. It's not any more than what's already in the air. Okay. So it's, it's then what what what's in that compressor? It's the same type of deal. So I I would rather clean it out. Yeah. Um, I mean the hole directly coming straight downward. Well, you're just trying to pressurize would... the bottom, and this oh, could see. be you know pushing down. That might might help, but it's. I mean, it's just a matter of air. Right. To fill this up, it's a little tricky because it's a very small hole. So I found this little little funnel that does fit, and you oh, can't just jam it down in. Oh, because it'll pressurize. It'll it. pressurize. So what you do <laughs> is you hold it where it's just barely in, and there's a little gap there. It needs and then to you be. pour in, and when mm. you pour it in, it'll just fill up and clog in here. So you take this same wire.